Howdy hum, my peeps. Okay. Boy, things are happening so fast. We had big, big neighborhood drama last night. Big. Okay, this is more, this is an extension of my neighbors from hell. Okay. I did that video like a year and a half ago. Maybe, a, yeah, probably a year and a half ago. And um, this is chapter two in the story. Okay, so things calmed down from the last time I did the neighbors from hell. The guy across the way, he sold his place or is in the process of selling his place. We got new neighbors up there. Frau Crazy Britches, who lives behind me, she has sort of calmed down. Or so I thought. Okay, this is what's been happening. So, about three or four days ago, I guess the day after the election, Mike comes in all hot and bothered and snorting and stomping, acting like a um, pissed off old burrow because the he and the neighbor had gotten the fra crazy britches they had gotten in this big argument because her cow and bull had been coming over onto our property it had been coming through the fence and of all the crap that's been going on lately dealing with the fence and her animals was like low on my priority list they always went back home to get a drink of water they, they only came over in the morning i figured long about now maybe later on this week i'd hop on over give her a hand fix the fence i wasn't tripping too hard well she and Mike got into a fighting match over these bulls. And he stomped off and she stomped off. And I heard about it secondhand. But I got a call two days later from my neighbor across the street, who I just adore. He says, hey, he says, are you guys done cooking yet? And Grant says, cooking what? And the neighbor says, well, meth, of course. <laughs> Grant was like, what are you talking about? And he said that Frau Crazy Britches had told the new neighbors who live across the street and are buying from the crazy man neighbor, had told them that we, our family, and my cross the street neighbor's family, so two of us, were um, meth chefs and apparently we were cooking meth on our property. Okay, take a good look at me, people. If I were cooking meth, would I look like this? No. I don't think so, okay? So, um, and of course, we're, I mean, we're, we're ridiculously old-fashioned and clean, and anybody who knows us would know that, right? So, um, I thought it was funny, and then I realized something. That's slander. You can call me fat, you can call me ugly, you can call me stupid, you can call me mean or insincere, you can call me late for dinner, you can call me anything you want to call me, but you can't call me a prostitute, you can't say that I have a sexually transmitted disease, you can't say that I am doing anything illegal unless those things are true. If those things are true and you've got evidentiary support and we go to court because I'm suing you for slander, then you have every right to say they're true. You're going to need to prove that they're true in order to slide out from underneath the lawsuit. But um, none of those things are true. Um, and particularly her accusation about being a, a, a meth chef. I mean, that, that's really serious business. So I thought to myself, oh, geez. I should probably report this to the sheriff just so that I have it on record. Um, I I know talking to her isn't going to make a difference, but if something goes down in the neighborhood, at least I will have some sort of documentation that this accusation was made. I had talked to law enforcement and so forth. So um, while I'm mulling this over, this happened last night sitting right here, working on my mermaid necklaces, and I hear <laughs> and I thought to myself, those were gunshots. And not only were they gunshots, but they were handgun shots. It wasn't a shotgun, wasn't a rifle. That was a handgun. And I thought to myself, all right, why am I so close to the sound of handguns going off? That's a little freaky. Went in to talk to Grant. He was listening to music. He hadn't heard it, but we turned the music off. He went outside, walked up to Mike's place. Mike, Tom, and my son Nick were sitting around um, 
Mike was three sheets to the wind. They were barbecuing. And Mike, uh, Grant's like, did you guys hear the shots? And Nick said, oh yeah. He says, let me tell you about it. He said, a truck came down from the new neighbor's house. They turned the corner. They hauled ass just real fast up the road. It's a bumpy road too, so they're bumping around. They get up about even with the puppy palace and that's where the three shots occurred. Nick said you could see the, the, the flame, you know, you can see fire coming out at night out of, a, out of certain handguns. I don't know if they're all of them, but whatever they were using, they could see it. And they heard it. And what they couldn't tell is if they were firing in the direction of our property or in the direction of my neighbor's property. They couldn't tell that. Then they, you know, hauled ass up the bumpy road and turned and then they heard more shots. I didn't hear the other shots. I was probably in talking to Grant with the radio on. But anyhow, so um, multiple shots were fired. Well, from a handgun, mind you. So um, we get on the phone to my cross the street neighbor. Hey, did you hear this thing happen? Um, no, we didn't hear it happen. Well, this is what happened. I hand the phone over to my son, Nick, who filled... Um, who filled our neighbor in on what was going on. So then everything settled down. Well, 15 minutes later, 20 minutes later, Nick comes back in the house. He says, hey, I just had a conversation with the police. I said, really? He said, yeah. He says, I was back up there with their barbecuing and, you know, Mike stumbling around screaming and yelling and, you know, being a drunk and the, we're barbecuing and they're drinking. And Nick, since Nick doesn't drink, he was stone cold sober. And up rolls the sheriff with his lights on and his, you know, his spotlight. He's looking back in the trees. Hey, what are you guys doing? This kind of shit. So Nick grabs his flashlight and walks, you know, over to over to the fence and says, well, you know, hey, officer, uh, we I'm glad you're here. We just he heard these shots being fired. And the guy says, yeah, that's why I'm here. He says, what did you hear? And by this time, he could tell Nick was sober. And he says, what did you guys hear? And so Nick fills him in, and they're talking. And my son's looking at the guy, and he's looking at, at my son. And he says, the, the cop says, do I know you? And Nick's like, yeah, I think I know you too. And the cop says, Nick, right? Uh, uh, Nick looks at his badge and he says, Dude, Anthony, I haven't seen you since high school. So, turns out he knew this sheriff, right? So, the sheriff says, look, he says, has this happened before? And Nick said, well, yeah, every Sunday. There's, um, they they throw a big fart party, there's lots of singing and dancing and hooting and hollering and music and no biggie, we don't care about that. And, and there is target practice, no biggie, we don't care about that. You know, you can hear the shotguns going off, no big deal. Um, but this is the first time any of us have ever seen someone shooting from the car a handgun, okay? That just was, that was new. And so Nick says, well, who called you? And the sheriff says, well, we had several reports and we didn't call and I oh, cannot zoom in in this mode. Okay, that's cool. We didn't call, the neighbors didn't call, so we figure either Frog Crazy Bridge has called or perhaps a passing motorist because they were discharging the gun when they were up on the main street as well. So um, hard to tell what happened, but the sheriff said, you know, he says, you guys need to get together as a group, everyone in the neighborhood that you can get together and go talk to your neighbor and tell them, look, you know what? This has to stop and it has to stop right now. If it does not, we're going we're gonna to camera up. We're going to be watching. And if this happens again and the cops have to come out, we it, tell them that we will not stop at their locked gate if this is if this is going on and that they can be ejected from the neighborhood, um, whether they own their place or not. They can be removed from the neighborhood. They can get a restraining order on them so that they can't even come home again because of the behavior of their extended family. So I thought that was interesting. I'd never heard that before. It's kind of scary, actually, but um, and I need to look into that. But that is what the sheriff told my son. So tonight we are going to attempt to talk to this neighbor and, you know, find out what's up. You know, and just let him know, hey, the handgun thing, you know, we're cool with everything, but the handgun thing, that can't happen, just cannot happen again. So, what I think was going on was that these folks have 
kind of inner city friends or family that come up here on the weekends and they probably think, hey, you know, we're out in the wilds of, you know, the country, we can do what we want. So they sing and dance and hoot and holler and play music and shoot off their guns because they think they can get away with it. So I think that's what's uh, been going on. Um, drama! Oh. So anyway, that's, uh, that's chapter two on the story of my neighbor's from hell. Bye. Oh.